finished <laughs> yet. Okay, so much for Sound Church, Christian. Yeah, um, another very big thing that we discussed a lot about, but uh, only implemented a little here and there, was um, the database scheme. Um, this was one example of uh, how the data could be organized for one sound file, pretty much just trying to get an overview of what we actually want to store together with the sound file, apart from just uh, the waveform data. And uh, yeah, the goal was to uh, create an audio database that allowed for uh, a lot of flexibility, a lot of speed and retrieval, and uh, allowed to store really vast amounts of metadata with the audio file. Um, as I said, um, this has not been implemented to the full extent. We have parts of it uh, in other tools that we're going to show later. Um, but this is still an overall goal that some people might work on uh, yeah, further on as part of their master thesis. Okay. Um, another thing that we had in the vision was about controlling audio signals. And one of our ideas was to create a 3D EQ, um, a 3D equalizer tool. And what we wanted, wanted to achieve was that we can somewhat, somehow uh, control an audio signal by um, having a 3D view, so we have three dimension in time, frequency, and so on, the, the energy curve, um, which could, we tried some prototypes, uh, maybe could look something like that, uh, or here we have a view of it, how the real world signal could look like, and we made it until again we get a processing prototype um, with the real world signal where we can really deform the signal but we find out that there are so many other guys in the world they do really cool stuff and they put so much effort and there are so many existing tools that we've decided to skip this idea completely um, because why shall we come up with a new Equilizer tool if there are hundreds, thousands of existing tools that you can easily buy on the market or just download it from the internet. So this will not too interesting for us. Um, one thing that uh, we had coming up very early in the uh, project was uh, something that's actually a lot of fun to use. Um, we call it the Foley Sonic Machine. Um, it's a tool for uh, fitting Foley sounds to a video track. Um, it's all build at maximum speed, um, fully functional, um, and yeah, it uses multimodal input uh, for syncing these Foley sounds to the video. So basically you have all the usual suspects, like the Wiimote, like the joystick, um, uh, what else do we have? We have MIDI controllers, uh, microphones, you could clap, and uh, all the uh, different inputs would be recorded. And uh, then you could uh, either control volume or uh, use the peaks to trigger certain Foley events. So um, basically this was something to fill the gap between adding Foley sounds just on the timeline uh, by using your mouse and going out into the real world recording Foley sounds uh, and putting them in. Um, so yeah, further on uh, this was quite inspiring for other things. Um, so first for something completely different. It is not that completely different. It's um, the virtual shaker that especially I did with Jörg together. Um, and this is about how to, well, um, come up with new ideas to, to control virtual instruments. Um, so the idea of Jörn and David, so I kind of see him somewhere, um, was the, from, from the first idea of the project was to create I would say more interfaces to create some something like instruments. So this is um, a work that uh, deals with this idea. So I try to um, use the, the V-mode controller um, um, as a virtual shaker. So to, to control um, a particle system uh, inside somewhat uh, like a game engine. And um, yeah, let's try to synthesize sounds out of it so that you can get, well, something like a maracas or, or whatever kind of shaker you'd like to see in this thing. Well, one of my favorites, um, this is Ear Market. Uh, it's prototype, uh, well, looks like a bomb, 
Um, anyway, uh, it's a prototype uh, of a hardware and software uh, for uh, an audio game uh, for mobile platforms. Um, we presented this at uh, the Audio Mostly conference up in Piteå in Sweden, and we actually took the car there because we were afraid to take that on a plane. Just a small story aside. Anyways, um, if we go to the next slide. Um, this is what it looks like in the background. So basically this device, which had uh, accelerometers, Bluetooth, um, and uh, a whole bunch of buttons, uh, and a compass, yeah, that was it, uh, would uh, communicate with this Max MSP patch, and uh, this patch would actually uh, create a soundscape, um, which uh, in this particular example was the soundscape of a virtual market. Um, you would navigate this market by walking in the real world, uh, your orientation would be detected by the compass and um, yeah, while you would walk through your room you would actually hear the soundscape changing in your headphones uh, and at this market you had to buy apples, donuts, fish and sugar and make sure you would not get caught by the thief and uh, of course there was big time pressure because you had to reach the tram in the end it was uh, received quite well, actually, at this Audio Mostly conference. Uh, we didn't expect that. Um, but people really liked it a lot, so... Yeah, unfortunately we don't have it with us, because we had to rip out the accelerometer chip and give it back to the whole Schule Uh So, yeah, anyway, no comment on that. Okay, somewhat funny. Uh, well, Sonosketch, we presented in the last presentation uh, in this context our Sonosketch application, which is one of the bigger things. Um, and maybe someone remember how Sonosketch looked like, uh, and even I forget uh, how the very first prototype looked like, and I was somewhat, somewhat surprised that this was the very first prototype of, of Sonosketch. Um, which uh, has been programmed by David uh, and he come up with a drawing surface where you can draw um, rectangles uh, that represent some audio snippets and you can put colors to them and so on. But this was one of the, the first proof of concepts of that, that kind of software can work. And then Xiao Li think, thought that uh, maybe that Max MSP things does not look too well. So she, she did a lot of research and ideas and put a lot of effort into coming up with more uh, colorful and more useful uh, kind of interfaces, which maybe uh, looked like that. So we had a, had a good um, base to discuss. Um, then our Batman uh, begins to program well, it's Michael Butterman, but we only call him Batman because we have two Michaels in the group. Um, <coughs> uh, she, uh, she, he, <laughs> <laughs> he programmed that thing, and his very first prototype looked like that. So we have the timeline and the pitch time grid, and you put some icons on it, and we have that a, a somewhat function to control a uh, envelope curve or something, and. Then we go on in our weekly meeting to just discuss that and try to come up with more ideas to enhance all that interface. So we wanted to get that tentpole-like shapes as maybe one knows from Wehinger's work on Ligeti's uh, uh, articulation. Okay. Uh, so some in-between states of the prototype look like that. We want said we needed definitely that granular tool um, the airbrush cannon, and we wanted to have more colors to, let's go back to the Shaolin approach. <laughs> and then we said, no, we wanted to have icons in the shape, so can we again use somewhat icons to see what we are drawing there. And then we said, okay, we wanted to have a pen on there, so how can we do that? And all the time we have to refine our prototype in a weekly base until we come to well, this is some of a picture um, of the actual uh, 